In America, COVID hasn't affected every person the same way. The age-adjusted COVID death rate showed black and Latino Americans are dying twice more likely of coronavirus compared to whites. The situation is worse for Native Americans and Pacific Islanders. Now, many factors are contributing to this huge gap, but one underlying reason is systemic racism. The extraordinary disparities we have in health, where in our country, similar to other disease, a vastly disproportionate amount of suffering among our brown and black people, our minority population, in which the incidence of their getting infected is much higher. Their degree of hospitalizations, intensive care and death is significantly higher than the general population. Another factor is vaccine hesitancy among certain communities who have been historically wrong by medicine. What does that mean? Well, take the Tuskegee syphilis study, for example. In Tuskegee, Alabama, during the 1930s, 399 poor black men with syphilis were studied without their knowledge or consent and withheld treatment for decades. The experiment continued until the 1970s, when it was revealed in the press and shut down. Of those 399 black men in the study, 100 or more died of syphilis or related complications. Others went blind. At least 40 of their wives were infected, and 19 children contracted it during childbirth. The distrust of the government and healthcare system among African Americans get passed down from generation to generation, and they collide squarely with COVID-19 vaccinations. And so when you have someone say to you, oh no, 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 I'm not taking that vaccine uh, because I remember Tuskegee, it's like this historical memory that African Americans have of experimentation on black bodies. For Asian Americans who recorded the lowest death rates in the pandemic, their lives weren't any better as COVID-19 fuels anti-Asian hate. The FBI recorded a 77% increase from 2019 to 2020 in hate crimes against people of Asian descent. According to Stop AAPI Hate, a California-based coalition that tracks self-reported incidents of harassment, assault, and discrimination, Against Asian Americans, there were over 6,000 cases in 2021, up from 4,600 in 2020. Studies also show that Americans living in poorer counties died at almost twice the rate of those in rich counties. According to the Poor People's Campaign, the 300 counties with the highest COVID death rates in America have an average poverty rate of 45%, and with household median incomes on average 23,000 US dollars lower than counties with lower death rates. Now, William Barber, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign said, and I quote, the neglect of poor and low wealth people in this country during pandemic is immoral, shocking, and unjust, especially in light of the trillions of dollars that profit-driven entities received. The impacts of COVID on families are not just financial. His wife is a single mother of four kids. She was a stay-at-home mom before, but is now looking for jobs in order to have more money to take care of her children, who are only seven years old, six, four, and one. The baby girl, Paisley, could point to a picture of her father and say, Dada, but the reality of him no longer being here is hard. Well, that's what we've been doing. I've been, you know, showing her pictures to... So she knows where her baby is, you know? Hearing one-year-old Paisley call for her father, breaks Emily Bennett's heart. Seven-year-old Mackenzie cries too, followed by four-year-old Savannah. Six-year-old Easton is comforted by his mother as they reflect on the loss of a husband and a father, Chad. He died on a ventilator from COVID July 29th. I called the hospital to see if I could bring the kids up so they could tell their daddy bye one last time. <laughs> According to the White House, more than 200,000 children in the United States have lost a parent or caregiver to COVID-19. What happens once a children has lost a primary caregiver? Well, the first urgent thing that we have to do is make sure that they don't go into an institution. There is very strong evidence that orphanages, institutions have very much higher rates of abuse, of sexual exploitation, that children's long-term outcomes are, are much more difficult. 
And so what we have to do is find them family homes, ideally within their extended family, but to support families to look after these children. They'll be recently bereaved, they may be out of school, they need extra support, um, parenting support and economic support within that family.